pushing the boundaries of expectations, rewriting the rules of adventure are the reasons we get up in the morning. We share your hunger for a life without limits. Well, we've been away a, a little bit longer than I like. <laughs> what were you thinking? Well, but you know what? Like a lot of people, we, we, we've been getting caught up on some, some travel, and that has caused us to be away a little longer than I like. And that's your excuse. Well, that's, that's all I got. I had to get caught up on my travel. <laughs> yes. Excuse me while I, I, I burden myself with... Actually, travel these days oh. is a burden for a lot of people. That's why we drove. So. <laughs> well, we did some driving. We've done some flying. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, we're oh. going to do some... Actually, we've got to do some more driving and flying um, as soon as we finish up here. I love it, though. How are you, Maggie? You can attract... I'm wonderful. You can attract a prosperous, easy travel if we choose to, and I think we do. You know, we have we really have been blessed with our, our travel so far in that we've not been um, told at the airport that our flight's been canceled yeah. or caught up in long lines or any of that stuff. It's the, what, what so. is, it's like the law of attraction or something. Well, you expect it, right? <laughs> we expect to be able to get from A to B pretty quickly, yes. and, and but we do it with gratitude. We don't show up to see if <sighs> we've been bumped or not. That we, really is a daily practice, and travel is sort of a great example of, of a daily practice practice of of gratitude and expectation mm. isn't it because mm. you know that's the thing that, that that can throw you off it's the unexpected and you do such a good job what is it called is it ways ways and and it yeah. gets it get you around a lot of stuff <laughs> it can driving. if you look at it early enough i tend to look at it once we're in traffic <laughs> i'm like what? what is this let me look at ways <laughs> why are we stuck <laughs> Oh, Way said get off a couple of miles yeah, ago. Yeah, oh, okay. It'll, I just looked to see how long we're going to be sitting there. That's Speaking funny. of which, we're going to be in Lynchburg, Virginia on July the 29th. And our, that's not true. That's not true. It's not? It's Norfolk. <laughs> I think you're right. I am right. I don't know. Okay, so we're going to be in Norfolk. <laughs> there you go. I've never been, you know, I think I've been through there, but I've not stopped. I think I've been through Virginia Beach, which is just down the street, but mm. but yeah, I, okay, so I'm excited. Okay, so Norfolk, Virginia on July the 20th. It is July 29th, right? That's correct, sir. And we're going to be there with our Candlelight Orchestra at the Roper Theater. Yeah. And then we're going to be at the Academy Theater in Lynchburg, Virginia on July the 30th. Yes. I got that right. You got that right. And I was trying, we were trying to squeeze in a couple of KB workshops while we are going to be in those two areas, but we just can't get there early enough. Yeah. Too many other things going on. So if any of you guys, gals, I don't like to say guys, I think it's overused. Hey guys. Hey guys. I don't oh, like to do that. It's because of YouTube. It's... Is that what it is? Everyone says it on YouTube. So, okay, so if any of you ins uh, would like to, <laughs> <laughs> if you can make it to one of the, <laughs> hey, if you if you can make it to one of those shows, <laughs> look, hang around mm -hmm. afterward, and Megan and I will come out and say hello to you. Yes, how's that? That's true. Do you ever find yourself in the uh, middle of something manifesting all around you that you've been thinking about or talking about? Can I interject one thing real quick? Before you answer my question, yes, because sure. it has to do with what you were just saying. Sure. Are we going to try to fit one in for Dallas? Fit a KB. Yes. Yes. I want to do that. Okay. But we've got to make sure we leave enough time. of a window before. Travel time. Travel time before or after that okay. we can do a KB workshop in Dallas. And that's going to so be in that. October. Uh, that's October 1st. Yeah. So around that yep. time. Yeah. We're going to work on it. We're going to, we're going to attract it. <laughs> we're going to make it manifest. Well, we need to start on that now. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I was distracted by the, those thoughts. So That's okay. So... Have you ever found yourself in the middle of something that's just, you know, popping up all around you? And it's just, you've been thinking about it and talking about it. And then, hey, this is, how did I get here? Yes. Wait a minute. I've been dwelling on this. <laughs> well, what's really exciting is when you, um, you know, you've been working on multiple manifestations and you, you started planting all those different seeds at the same time, maybe a long time ago. And so they all start sort of, you know, coming up for harvest at the same time. That's thrilling. Well, you're talking about purposeful manifestations, but you know, this goes into, we're manifesting whether we're intending to or not. And, True. That's, and so yes. often people will find themselves in the middle of a mess that they've been, <laughs> they've been meditating on. And, and then the next thing that you, you know, it's just the, the, the realness of this is yeah. upon me now. I have to say that I think I think I definitely used to do that in the very very early days of, of 
being maybe more unconscious in my mm-hmm. pursuits. But now I am very sensitive. Like, uh, very is not a big enough word. I am so hypersensitive <laughs> to, to um, you know, saying little, you know, things that seem little that aren't little. Um, it, 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 yeah. No. Mm-mm. Well, that's true because nope. just the other day you came into the room with like your hair on fire and I'm like, what is it? You said, I've been thinking about something I shouldn't be thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> but, talk, you know. Let's talk I, about something good. But I have to say that only <laughs> lasted like it. three seconds. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, when you start to understand your power and what you're actually doing to yourself with your thoughts, with your words, with your conversations, um, you get your butt in gear and you figure this thing out and you, and you don't keep going down, you know, the... Uh, the swirly of, of negative thoughts. But that's so true because you and I have been potent, have been um, uh, purposeful cabies for mm-hmm. a long time now. Yeah. And you do recognize what you're doing with what you're saying and what you're thinking about. Yeah. Because the subconscious is always working. I mean, it's kind of like Google algorithms. And so you, you <laughs> it never you know quits. You, you, all of it a sudden you're getting quits. these emails about this weird stuff you've been talking about. That's so true, though. The it's algorithm of the listening. universe. Yeah, but the, it's the <laughs> wow. the subconscious is the engine that never quits. It's in a perpetual state of attracting whatever's been programmed into it, and that mean that goes for it being good or bad. Yes. So the most important question becomes, what the heck are you dwelling on? And mm. if it's not something you want to see show up in your life, stop it. Right. <laughs> just yeah. quit. Yes. Well, and it's interesting, too, how that starts. It's not just uh, it's not just straightforward. Like, uh, I don't want this negative thing to happen, so I'm not going to think about it. Um, it's interesting how as you develop in kinetic, kinetic belief, it, it permeates other areas, too. For example, um, you know, you see someone walking down the street and you don't like what they're wearing. Um and you, you are, your mind goes quickly to judge what they're wearing or to maybe how they're walking or what they're doing, something negative about them. Um, but then kinetic belief, that awareness kicks in. And you go, whoa, whoa, no, nope, not doing that. And you replace it with a good thought. You replace it with a positive, encouraging, edifying, co-creative thought. And, you know, because all of those things, it's not just the, the obvious, I guess is what I'm saying. It, it's any kind of judgment negativity, toxic, you know, that, that negative bias, that negative slant. Well, you know, the, I, the example of you see somebody walking down the street and you don't Mm -hmm. like what they're wearing is because we, the ego is projecting. Yeah. And it's not that you don't like what they are wearing is that you don't like the idea of you wearing what they are wearing. So you don't like it. And that's, Uh, and that's it. The yeah. ego. And so, you know, that's yeah. what we're always combating, right? Like right. you're making sure that you're keeping that little monster in its cage. Because you're thinking, would I wear that? Or would I say that? Would I do that? Would I drive that? Would I work there? Would I yeah. act like that? And rather than do that and project yourself into that, you allow them to be that. Well, and that's what in what you just described. That's I think that's so beautiful because when you allow it to, and when you remain conscious, even when your ego is trying to break through... um you know, you have this beautiful tra- transition, very quick transition, it can be, into the higher self, and it sort of keeps fixing everything. Well, because then absent judgments, what happens is you've got to realize that whatever I'm dwelling on, I'm creating or I'm destructing. Yes. And the force that's either coming for me or against me is solely going to be dependent upon what I'm dwelling on. Is it good or bad? Am I fearful of it or does it excite me as something that I really want to happen in my life? And then as an intentional KB, we recognize, like we're saying, that these ideas and thoughts that we are um, uh, digesting and ingesting are going to become me in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to become an observer of all things mm-hmm. and allow all things to be as they are. And you get to know yourself throughout this process. You get to know um, what are your triggers. You know, for example, I struggle the most probably when I'm really fatigued. And I'm sure a lot of people feel the same. Um, but that's not the same for everyone. But when I'm really tired, I have to be hyper aware of, of especially my inner dialogue. It's not so much what I'm saying or what I'm projecting. It's my inner conversation with self. But that's just something I had to learn about myself through the kinetic belief growth process. And and learning those things about yourself, are, it's very powerful um, because then you can, you know, avoid the pitfalls. Um, you can avoid wasted 
time and as you as you grow in this it, it does become better and easier and more fluid because what you're doing is you're separating you've learned to separate yourself from the ego yeah and by doing that you become an observer of self mm. you can smile at yourself you can say oh no you don't i'm not going to allow you to overeat <laughs> and consume this yeah. stuff that's not good for you because you I, well and you know it's funny because you can't like that's a great example because You'll never stop, for example, uh, over consuming um, because you are sh because you shame yourself about it. You're going to do it because you've stepped into the higher self. And that's what I love about what you're saying. It's like <laughs> it's the antidote to everything. Higher self is the answer. Higher self is the answer <laughs> again and again. So then as an observer from the higher self to the lower self of, of self... <laughs> <laughs> you are taking stock and inventory, me. but it's all about you, but it's not all about you. Exactly. And so we're separating ourselves from the lower self. That's the ultimate <laughs> kinetic belief motto. Right. Now, Can wait. I just, that's our new slogan. It's all about me and it's not about me. Yes. And now, if you get it, you get it. <laughs> you know, we were in a hole here we're going to have to dig out of. So um, don't touch it. that dial. We're going to, we're going to pull ourselves out of this in some way. <laughs> But if something scares me, for example, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about it and dwelling on something and, and I'm fearful of whatever that thing is, immediately I replace it with formative, positive expectations that I'm now going to dwell upon. And I'm doing this intentionally. And so I cast down the negative and I replace it with the positive by choosing intentionally what I'm going to dwell on. Mm -hmm. Well, how do somebody says, well, how do I stop that, that, uh, uh, stinking thinking. How do I get out of this this cycle? And the way to do that is to replace your thoughts with with the spoken word. Yes. It is impossible to think one thing while saying something else out loud. Yeah. And that's why our our um, highest viewpoints yeah. um, and a mantra of highest viewpoints affirmations yeah. become so vital to our success as KBs. And we don't allow the the negative wheels to keep turning, and we speak the affirmation. We speak from the highest viewpoint, the uh, intentions for our life, and then it, it replaces that negative thinking with the positive. And by staying and remaining positive in the present tense moment of now, that's where all the work is being done. Life around you begins to formulate in a way that aligns with those positive images and thoughts. As we continue to press in with a, a, a fervent uh, process of, of, of pursuing those good things, well, but that's, that takes effort. It does. And, you know, I felt the, the way that you just described that two-part process was really empowering because, you know, first of all, you have to even be conscious enough to know what's going on, to be aware of a toxic thought, to be aware of a negative thought encroaching on you. Um, because when you've lived only unconsciously and and in the chaos of the world, that's not the easiest thing. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I just love that two-part process you were saying. You did it. First is the realization, and then second is this immediate response. Uh, no waiting, no hesitating. We immediately respond with positive interruptions. Well, without the knowledge of what we're talking about, and if you're in the world and you're consuming the news and the negativity, you'll stay there. It's impossible yeah. to come out of something unless you do it intentionally, mm -hmm. and yeah. especially the, the yeah. ego, because the ego is satisfied to stay right there, and it will feed you with the negative emotions and scare you with more of, of those thoughts, and you a person stays there. We just don't know how to come out of it. When I find solace in, in the idea that this is a practice, and you know, as long as we're making even a, a centimeter of progress every single day in each moment with our thinking and our words and our kinetic belief walk, if you will, um, that we're going to get to look back and see all this progress and it, and it will evolve and become bigger and better and, and even easier. Truth will not set us free. Knowledge of the truth is the thing that sets you free. Mm. You showed me something yesterday that yeah. I thought was fascinating. And uh, it's eye-opening, but it's just, again, it goes back to having knowledge that will change things. And I think there was someone that was ordered some pizza. They wanted a nine-inch pizza. And so the waiter brought them two five-inch pizzas and said, I'm sorry, we're out of the nine-inch pizza. So here's two five-inch pizzas. And this was a, a, apparently a mathematician that sat there and said, oh, no, you don't. And then showed them the mathematical formula that illustrated that two five-inch pizzas is still smaller than a nine-inch pizza. 
and uh, and to get the owner on the phone. <laughs> I love like. it. I think I would have been eating my five inch pizzas by now if I was with this person. But anyway, get the owner on the phone and called him up and went through the mathematical equation of how really the circumference of two five inch pizzas is less less uh, space or less pizza. <laughs> What's <laughs> then, the formula, Steve? And so yeah. that, I think I think the it end was result was that they gave them four. Just four they probably just gave, just gave him four, four just four to pizzas to get him out of there. But <laughs> but the point of it is is that there is there is knowledge. Yes. Where there is knowledge, there is empowerment. Empowerment. Yeah. And in, in much the same way as uh, kinetic believers, we, we go to the quantum physical formulas um, and particle physics that, ex- that shows you that the things that we're talking about here today, Meg, thoughts, when we're thinking, it just because you can't see a thought does not mean it's not real. There, there is substance. There's quantum substance to our thinking. There's substance to our words are things in this universe. Mm. There is no such thing as a thing, as a thought that is void of substance. There is something between the nothing in particle physics now. There's dark matter. We are swimming in ideas, the substance of thought and ideas. There is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new as where, where thinking is concerned. We are simply assembling the blocks of thoughts and Thereby, that's how we, that's how humanity creates. It's with, through the collective thought process, through the alignment of agreement. The individual is creating the life that they're living by the words that they are speaking, the things that we dwell upon when we think. And th- the quantum mechanic equation, just like the pizza, <laughs> like for the kinetic pizza. belief, is kinetic belief equals one half mass, mass being the the mass or the the particles of energy that are formulated when we think about something so kinetic belief is one half of mass times the velocity squared where mass is uh, 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 the velocity is the amount of intention or time that we spend dwelling on a particular thought so we are constructing the the mass of the thought by the intensity of the amount of time we dwell on it. And we keep, if you keep thinking about something and dwelling upon it and obsessing over something, you're going to see it show up in your life, whether it be a good thing or a bad thing. That is the power of the, the creative energetics that we have as human beings created in the image of our creator. And so the velocity in this equation is mathematically squared by the observer's bias, which means kinetic belief rapidly attracts the mass of abundance of what we dwell upon. Mm -hmm. That's why whatever you're talking about is the life that you're going to experience. Whatever you continue to dwell upon is the the life that's going to manifest around a person. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking on good things, then you're going to appear to be a very blessed person in this life. If you dwell upon the negative, things that scare you, the fearful things, the bad news of the day, then that's the kind of, that's the stuff that's going to come against you. And here's the deal. Um, It must come against you or it must come for you, regardless of how things look. the, the, The point of all this is, is we don't stop adhering to and relying on the outcome that we desire. Um, it, we, we continue to press into it like we were talking about intentionally the things that we want to see come to pass in our life, casting down the negative imaginations and drawing intentionally into our thought process, the things that we want to see come to pass in our life and our, our higher being then flourishes in the land of the living. Wow. And that's how this works. I want to share a personal sort of breakthrough with this topic that I've had recently. Um, you and I have had a lot of conversations recently about <clears throat> when you have conversations about an occurrence in the past, specifically something maybe that someone did to you. And a lot of times we can fall into the trap of, oh, I need to talk it through. I need to talk, to talk about it. Um, this, and, and you know, it's not really about what that means for you emotionally, but I think it's important for us to recognize what we're doing as far as the principles of the universe go that you just described. 
So maybe you feel like you need to talk about what this person did to you. Um, But I hope you want it to happen again because that's what will happen. You will attract that person or someone like them into your life and you will get on that merry-go-round like it's day one. And many times, you know, for me personally, I was, I was really feeling as though like, okay, this is part of my, my healing process, my journey. I need to discuss this. I need to get this worked out in my, with you, you know, with my partner, I need to talk about it. Um, but what sort of throws that out the window is the facts, the facts, the scientific facts that you were just describing of what you're truly doing to yourself, what you're actually attracting. And, and then all of a sudden that really reveals that the only way to move through something, the only way to truly heal from something is to speak the positive outcome of your future, the positive outcome that you want to be in your life. And that's the only thing. And it, and it feels quite ironic, you know, in the moment that that's the, that that's the answer, but it's a big trap. It's a big trap that I was falling into. And, um, I just, I just think it's a huge thing to, to realize. And there's a process, isn't there? There's a process to recognizing, first of all, the person who's in something like you're talking about. Maybe you're in a bad relationship. Maybe it is with, um, well, let's just say the way that you're raised. Uh, maybe it's with family. Maybe it's with friends. Maybe it's at work. And, and when, when we are in something, often it's very difficult to recognize that what you're in is not good for you. Yeah. What you're in is, um, you, maybe you've shouldered the responsibility of a bad relationship and you believe you've been made to believe either by yourself, your subconscious, um, uh, reconciles the situation that you're in as being something that you deserve or mm. that this is the way it's supposed to be. Wow. But then there's a process that comes along that says, wait a minute, I need to get out of this forest of, of bad experiences and change my perspective long enough, take a long enough drive, a long enough hike. I need to take a two week vacation. I need to get out of this stuff and take stock of it and see it for what it really is. Is this good for me? Is it positive for the others? Is this a relationship that is being that's edified and encouraging. Are we all being celebrated? Is there a championing in this relationship? And if the answer is no, then you have spent enough time talking about it, thinking about it Mm. to recognize that, okay, it's time to change course. And by changing course, like you're saying, I need to stop talking about this and make the changes and move forward. Take this moment of excellence that is in the present tense of now and begin constructing that and articulating through my manifesting journal what it is that I now see that I desire in this life and make those hard choices to rip the bandaid of life off and, wow. and to move forward and not, not linger and dwell upon those things anymore. I've done the, the work of mentally taking stock of where I am in life and now I'm going to move forward. When I love how we're sort of getting into the uh, minutia, if you will, of, of the process of, especially when it comes to relationships, because, you know, you just described moving on. And what's going to happen next is the ego. Your ego is going to want to justify your decision to move on instead of just letting it be the good decision from your higher self. Um, your ego is going to want to justify that decision by going, well, they did this. No, you, you really don't understand how bad they were. They were really rude or they did, they were this abusive or that abuses. And let me just talk about it all the time so that I can feel very justified in this decision I made. And it's just really wild how we can just sort of spiral down into these conversations and into these uh, uh, moments of inner dialogue that are just going to put us right back on the same train that we worked so hard to get off of. You're taking a walk in the forest and you've already done the work and you recognize that none of that was good for me. And yet these hands of the ego start coming up out of the sand of the trail to pull you back <laughs> right. down and say, wait a minute, those are the, those are the, yes. the long nailed fingers of the ego that are drawing you back into yes. the reasonings and the double mindedness of, 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 of the condemnation and right. saying, now, wait a minute, who do you think you are? You got out of the horror movie alive. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> don't go back. Don't go back to the reasonings and wow. the double mindedness. Wow. And also when you're in the process, don't confuse the intensity of desire with being in a hurry. 
Mm. There's nothing that we have to, we don't have to, like the horror movie, we don't have to start running. <laughs> because yeah. the velocity and the intensity of the velocity of desire comes from maintaining the observation rather than frantically trying to get away from something that we've been able to determine is not good for us. Well, and you know, a lot of times if you haven't been manifesting the life that you want, the excitement, the sheer joy, the anticipation and optimism can feel alien. It can feel very strange in your own body if you're not used to it. It can almost make you feel a little edgy, a little scared, as mm -hmm. if, oh, well, this feels too good. This this can't be right. Yeah. Oh, if this is happening now, well, what what horror it lays around the next corner? That's and it, so yeah. controlling those thoughts, mm -hmm. and that's it, isn't it? You know, you're always telling us, you know, don't you have emotions, but don't let them control you. We control our thoughts. We control our emotions. We put the, mm -hmm. that demand on on that inner dialogue, that inner conversation that's always at work, and and that's what is going to allow us to you know continue on this on this journey of growth and evolution. Anytime we find ourselves in a hurry or worried about manifesting something, the desire is rooted in fear. Mm. And so again, that's the checkpoint. That is where we stop and say, okay, wait a minute. I want the velocity. I want the intensity of change to be uh, relevant to where I am in this, in, in my life. So recognize that if you, if you, if we're wanting to move ahead and move forward, the intensity of velocity, again, it comes from maintaining that the, the present tense moment of now in a posture of gratitude and excitement like we're talking about from moving forward. Because if we, if we are doing anything that's rooted in fear, if you're hurried uh, or if you're worried about anything, fear that what you're hoping for, it, it's not going to come to pass for you. However, the thing that you fear will come against you. Wow. Worry is mental. It's just, it's being double-minded. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'm going to stop here and go back and rethink my decision yeah. and become double-minded again. And I'm going to allow these reasonings to, to argue and debate with my higher self because what it will do is show up and say, well, now, who do you think you are? You know, you deserve that. You were misbehaving <laughs> when that happened yeah. and you were responsible for the bad thing. And remember what they told you. You don't have enough education. You don't have enough personality. You don't, whatever you, you were born on the wrong side of the tracks, whatever it is, all of that double mindedness comes in there and, and it, you, we cannot hold on to the hope of one thing while imagining the one thing may not come to pass for us. Mm -hmm. And the imagination for it not coming to pass is always rooted in reasonings and double-mindedness. Well, I have to say something that I love observing you do, and you do this so seamlessly and seemingly effortlessly, but I know it's from... <laughs> from many years of practice, is you'll put in the work, you do the kinetic belief, you work on the manifestations, you you do the work that's required, you're doing your 50%, and then right when you just know it's about to pop through, you release it. And you say, if it's meant to be, it will be. I don't want anything for me that's not supposed to be for me. And so you do this really beautiful push all the way up to the point of manifestation. And then there's this really amazing sort of release um, where you're meeting, the, you know, that's the point of connection where you're meeting the universe uh, at that halfway point, which I just love to watch. I just think it's so cool because um, that's the moment, the breakthrough moment is when we are most tempted to force something, to force it through, to punch it through, to, to make something happen. All of a sudden, it's we're outside of faith and we're into, you know, making it happen. Well, that's walking something up to the point of worry. Mm. Because you can be excited about going to the amusement park, go excited about getting there, excited about what may happen. And somebody says, well, you know, it's supposed to rain this afternoon. And you th then you're at that, that the crossroads yeah. of am I going to continue to be excited or am I going to now start to worry <laughs> yeah. and become fearful that I'm not going to be able to spend time in the amusement park this afternoon. And the closer you get, the, the more that presses on you. The more that presses. And so the... What you do then, the mental exercise is, is to say, you know what, because I am living an amazing life 
Everything I do is wonderful. Everything, everywhere I show up is going to work out mm. because I'm not going to stress over it, but I'm going to show up and I'm going to be excited about whatever happens is happening for good, yes. for the best outcome. Because, you know, it, it would be so easy for us to sit here when we do these podcasts and for me to just talk about how useless it is to worry. It's so easy to just say, hey, here's some good advice for everybody out there listening today. Just stop worrying. Oh, my word. But it's not possible to stop worrying when you have fear about the past, present, or future. Um, when, you are, when we're trying to manipulate the outcome of something in a way that we want to see it um, uh, completed, Manipulation is going to result in you worrying about it. It's, it's like these bridezillas <laughs> who have determined they exactly want the where exactly how all the place settings are going to be, where the napkins are going yeah. to be, and if the wind blows one of those napkins out of place, then they are just out of sorts. I yeah. mean, they, they, it ruins everything because they they were not able to manipulate the perfected outcome that they had imagined to see. Well, and I have to say, out of all the hundreds of weddings that I played for growing up, it was always the micromanaged, overplanned weddings that went totally askew, totally haywire. Right. I mean, all the napkins blew off, <laughs> you know. And it that's was what you It was def definitely going to rain. But it was like the least planned were the most, the, the easiest, beautiful. the most beautiful. And so, and it's exactly what you're saying. The more you try to manipulate, the more that you try to control, um, the more you're just really raising your chances of, you know, more things to... Go haywire. Whatever you fear will come against you. If you fear <laughs> right. those napkins blowing off, guess what's going to happen? Yeah. They're all going to get dumped onto the, the floor. <laughs> uh, is is grooms, gr Groomzilla, is that a thing? No. No, there's no such thing as a Groomzilla. <laughs> I hope there is. I'd <laughs> sure, love to I'm see sure that. That would be hilarious. That'd be a good, um, that'd be a good movie. <laughs> Groomzilla. Who would do it? Will Ferrell? That'd be a good one. I think so. <laughs> That'd be amazing. But the only way that I can eliminate <laughs> worry is by eliminating fear. I cannot get rid of worry by telling myself that it yeah. is useless or foolish. No, if I have fear, then my ego will worry. Yeah. My ego will continue to remind me of the possibility of those napkins being blown off onto the floor. Well, and, and this this is something that you spoke to me. We had just really first met. This is one of, one of the very first kinetic belief truths that I got a hold of that absolutely revolutionized my whole life, which is the the replacement factor. You, no, you cannot get rid of anything. You cannot get rid of a habit or a thought or words, nothing. You have to replace them with, with the positive, mm. with the alternative. Yeah. You have to, you know, it's like in the, the Indiana Jones movie when he grabs the gold and puts the bag of sand <laughs> there. You just have, like that. Just like that. But it's you but it is sort of like a hostage exchange. You know, you're like, you know, give me this for this. And you have to do that. You cannot just say, stop having that bad thought. Stop saying these bad things mm. and stop mm. worrying. That's that's totally fruitless. Well and the way you do that is you it's faith or kinetic belief allows the universe to do its part. I want to i I'm gonna show up there and my part is to expect the best. And then the, the other part is, is to see what the heck's going to happen. Because the <laughs> promise is, is that it's greater than anything that I can think of or imagine. Yeah. And I'm willing to allow, if the universe wants to scatter my napkins into this design of confetti all over my, the scene of my wedding, then I am so grateful for that. Let's see it happen. <laughs> If it doesn't want to, then let's see that happen. I'm willing to let go and allow the universe to be part of my life and to bring in the unexpected, and I expect the unexpected to be greater than anything I expected. How important is it to like, sort of pre-posture yourself to, 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 to live this way? Um, you know, Let's say that you are, you're approaching your day. I mean, do you posture yourself every single morning in a way that says, um, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm showing up today to ride the bull of life, you know, to mm -hmm. flow and to uh, sidestep and to enjoy whatever's coming, coming my way. I do. I check my dominion at the door because dominion is often overused by just about everyone. We were created with dominion, but we're not supposed to use our dominion to control the environment or other people. Yes. That's an abuse of dominion. Dominion is mm. m giving myself the uh, allowance to use my authority to uh, expect the best and to operate in gratitude and then to manifest when I'm expecting yeah. uh, those good things to to show up. Wow. But you know, as long as as long as I have fear, 
As long as there's doubt or uncertainty, if there is doubt or uncertainty as to whether I will get well, I will worry about my health. If there's doubt or uncertainty as to whether I will succeed in business, then I'm going to worry about failing. And so as long as there is doubt or uncertainty, the substance of fear is present. And as long as there is the wobbling, attracting force of fear, the destructive action of negative attraction is at work in my life. And I'm going to see these things showing up in my life that I'm I'm fearful of. Mm. So now there's something that I know that I must do. And that is that I've got to eliminate from my thoughts all doubt and uncertainty that I will get well, that I will succeed, that I will manifest what I desire. And the meditative process of reprogramming my thinking through those patterns of kinetic belief, that's what's going to create the certainty of thought that I'm going to definitely succeed in my health in this moment, in my business in this moment, with the love of my life in this moment. And it's from my immovable expectations in this moment that the future, my future is being born. Mm -hmm. My future of tomorrow, when my moment shows up tomorrow, it's beautiful. And it's, and it has a static presence of beauty in the present tense moment of my expectations right now. That's going to flourish into my day tomorrow. Wow. Wow. Nothing can eliminate a doubt, but a kinetic belief in this moment. Mm -hmm. Isn't it wonderful that that's all we need to really work with is the moment of now? Yes. Imagine if we had to, to generate our future by leaving the present moment to work on tomorrow and be fearful of what may come tomorrow. We work on tomorrow in this moment. Well, that's how we all, that's what we were all doing <laughs> before kinetic belief. That's how we did live. You know, we were um, stealing from Peter to pay Paul. You know, we were taking time from our present moment in trying to manipulate the future, which is impossible. Which throws us out into the world of victimization. You know, something I, I was realizing is that our, our mind is always redefining and making new connections. You know, that's part of our growth. And it's so powerful to get to the point as a kinetic believer where your mind is automated and it automatically senses and knows that the thought that you're having is a true representation of a physical manifestation. And I think that's why as we grow deeper and we become more powerful kinetic believers, that the, when the thought does show up, we react so almost violently to the negative thought. And we cut it out and we, and we nip it immediately because in our mind it's automatically repre representing something standing in front of us. Instead of it being this far off, maybe it might sort of kind of manifest in the future. It's so it becomes as real as it truly is. Well, that goes back to what these the example I cited a little while ago was. I think when you ran in a room with your hair on fire, it was somebody, somebody, <laughs> in, somebody in your past that used to bully you, and then you started having thoughts about them, and you said, "Wait a minute, absolutely not," because you recognize as soon as you start thinking about the bully, the bully shows up again. Yeah. I said, "No, no, 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 I don't want to see them again." <laughs> because we are connected. Yeah. There is a oneness. <laughs> We're not disconnected by distance or anything else. And you start dwelling on a person yeah. from your past, you're going to hear from them. Yes. You're going to see them again. Absolutely. They're going to show up in your life again. And if you want to move beyond somebody for your past, the key is to don't think about them. Yeah. Don't dwell upon them. And if that image of their or their name shows up in your thoughts, cast it down by speaking something else. Well, exactly. And, and yes. you, you, you put distance of, of, of uh, accessibility in mm. place. Well, and they cast it down by speaking something else. That's the power. That's, that's the key. That's the key to success in, in this specific topic because, you know, it, it really always gets me when, you know, you see things like, uh, don't worry, don't do this, don't do that. I mean, it's like, oh, really? Thank you. Bob, I had, Bob Newhart. I had no idea <laughs> that that would help me, you yes. know, like you wouldn't just stop worrying if you could. I mean, you know, you have to have the tools to execute these things and replacing Toxic negativity, negative thoughts, old behaviors, old habits, um, memories from the past, you know, traumatic, what even if it's very, very traumatic memories from your past, those are replaceable with the positive, optimistic future thoughts. The Bob Newhart psychiatrist skit that he was doing in the, the, uh, 
person oh, sitting so there and, and they're talking about how difficult things are and he would say stop it well and they would explain what <laughs> yes <laughs> just, just stop it. they would explain this very intricate problem you know it's been my whole life and i've struggled with this and on and on and on okay well stop it <laughs> and that's a solution to everything yeah. which i kind of like that yeah. but it's only certainty that can remove uncertainty in our lives yeah. Certainty removes uncertainty. How can yes. I make myself certain that I will get well? And, or how can I make myself certain that I will succeed? Only by protecting the moment of now that I'm occupying right now from negative imaginations. So all I got to do, protect the football, hold uh-huh. it tight, protect your moment of now from negative imaginations coming in and ruling your thoughts by articulating the knowledge of my desire through the power of gratitude that what I desire to come to pass in my life is done in my life right now. Yes. This is the meditative process that produces within me and without me and around me certainty of the thing that I'm grateful for. Mm. Every human being has within themselves the power to manifest perfect health. The peace that comes from knowing this, from believing this, is evident when there is no uncertainty as to my ability to attract good health. Mm -hmm. And so I do. And I have within me the power that brings to me the endless source of abundance in my life, in our life, because we're doing doing your life together. (laughs) And I I know from experiential knowledge, from my studies of quantum physics... And from applied spiritual practices and purposeful manifestations, from the wisdom that's been imparted to me from my creator, I know that if I constructively use the power and the authority and the dominion that is within me right now, that there is no uncertainty about, well, for wealth in my life. Because I am wealth. I don't have it. I am it. It's not something that I've acquired. I'm just that. Mm. I am good health. It's not something that I'm trying to gain. I am that. I'm the substance of that, you see. And that's what makes the journaling so powerful, the, the law of attraction journal, because it puts you into a mindset every single day of, of creating those imaginations and then daily building on yesterday's imagination. So... You know, you, you may have just a rough blueprint on Monday, um, but then by Friday's journaling session, you have a very clear picture of what you are desiring and what you're what you're going to be manifesting. I like that because throughout the week we're building, aren't we? Yeah. And as builders, we are creators. Yeah. And each one of us has within us the power to develop all of our creative talents. If constructively used, the power of kinetic belief patterned into the, the, the present moment would develop us into something bigger, into something greater than anything we could have ever imagined before. And anyone, here's the deal, anyone can learn to use the patterns of belief constructively. Yes. So there's no doubt about development because the ability to develop is who we are. But the thing to overcome is the bad habit of thinking of life as matters of uncertainty. Well, we'll just show up and hopefully the creek don't rise (laughs) or whatever it is. Things, uh, we just, people believing that things are just out of their control. So we try to control things and that's the abuse of dominion and, and that's manipulation. We were never meant to control other things. If you want to change your life, you change yourself. If you want to change your relationships, you change yourself. If you want to change the whatever it is, you change yourself in the present tense moment of now. I want to share this. You posted just a few days ago on this on Instagram, and I just really loved it. And I've read it quite a few times in the past week or so. Um, And if you're not following Steve on Instagram, that's at Stephen Canyon. That's easy to... (laughs) <laughs> to find, right? Yeah, that should be. <laughs> it's your name. Um, but you said uh, most people don't realize it, but we're in a construction zone while we're on this earth. And if we want a complete peace of mind experience, it won't be enough to deconstruct any bad manifestation that's lodged itself in our expectations over time. While we're busy reconstructing our expectations, according to our articles of faith, our kinetic beliefs, we're also tearing down the negative ones. And that's why the second simple step to secure your peace of mind in a world of chaos is to build ourselves up. And I just love that, that visual of, of it being a construction zone. Um, we're always, you know, there's something I grew up around homes being built. My 
dad built homes, my grandfather built homes. And there was always such a fun little energy to go to the job site you know, see the workers and see the foundations being laid and, and see the, the framing being put up. There was always something to do down to the very last, you know, couch cushion, <laughs> down to the last plant that was put in the front yard. But I just love that visual of that's what we're showing up every day to do within ourselves and within our own, uh, you know, garden, as you call it many times. That's beautiful. Because, and and I, I love the analogy if you we cannot build our own house if we're trying to build the neighbor's house at the same time. Oh, what? That was, yes. <laughs> so we yes. control ourselves, control our own yes. temple, control mm. our the construction of self, yeah. control building ourselves up. Yes. And so we get rid of the habit of trying to control everybody around us. Yeah. It's like, it, you know, there are people, the ego wants to tear other people down, and that's how they... It, it imagines it building itself up. So if I want the biggest house in the neighborhood, I need to tear all the other ones down. Mm. Well, that's a destructive lifestyle. And so rather than spending time destructing the egos and the people and the world around you, to tearing it down, we're building ourselves up. Yeah. And the way that we get rid of the habit of, of trying to control other people, rather than attempting to control our environment, we form the way of thinking to implement control over our present moment of self-influence. Mm. And you know, this we can do by influencing the power that's within us to be subject to our constant meditation and by thinking it continuously, by observing continuously, by believing it continuously. And you know, as a holistic proposition, uh, actually, I know that I can manifest what I want. If I keep thinking about what I want as a fact until I habitually think that I can attract what I want, mm. and then I keep on meditating and considering what I want until I continually feel that I have what I want. Now, you may not see it. Other people won't believe it. And if I ask them, they're probably going to tell me that I don't have it. So guess what I'm going to do or not do? I'm not going to ask. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to confer a counsel with them anymore about me. Why would I go to the neighbor's house to talk about what I should do with my house? Yes. So I don't ask them. I don't want to know what other people think. They have their own monitors and, and their own um, lives and their own you know, system of being and doing that they need to contend with. I don't want their battles. I don't want to get in there and wage the wars of, of the lives around me. Everybody has their own stuff and they're at their own walk and their own place in life. This world is full of tests and that's why we're all here. Are you, what kind of test are you going to take? Well, I'm taking enough of my own. I don't want to come in there and take anybody else's with them. And I certainly don't want to be the test for them. Mm -hmm. Although you can't always help that part of the process. But I don't want the battles of anybody else. So I continuously, like you're saying, Maggie, I continually journal upon the fact that, you know what? I am manifesting what I desire. And, 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 and what do you know? I'm even establishing the feeling that I most certainly have received what I want and I am what I want. I am, I am that I, <laughs> that I am. Mm -hmm. And when that feeling is established and you know, when it shows up, it rises up from within and you're feeling the, the feeling of victory. You're feeling the exuberance of, of manifestation. And now don't confuse that with, I must feel it before I have it. Because we, like you said, you know, we have emotions, but we don't want emotions to have us. Mm -hmm. And so I've entered the firm, immovable, magnetic, transcendent state of mindfulness now when all of this is, is taking place. And the reason the manifesting journal is so vital to getting rid of doubts and worries and fears is it just isn't enough to give our intellectual awakening, our transcendent ascent to the belief that, you know what, I have within me the power which can change my health, that can change my wealth and attract whatever it is I desire into my life. Yes. The enthusiastic, euphoric <laughs> adrenaline of gratitude ultimately releases the feeling, the sense that I have this power. And the feeling is only established by me continuously meditating upon the authoritative power of attraction as a fact as a reality in my life, not wishful thinking. So I spend as much time as possible just meditating upon the fact that I've got within me the power which can accomplish exactly what I want. 
It's not a theory. You know, what we're talking about here today, it's not just a, a, a supposition, but it's the manifesting power of observation. And it's a fact of every single person's existence. It's not just you and me. All of us are in this boat together. So it's, it's unavoidable. That's what you're telling us. And, and yeah, you know what? It's not, just, it's not easy. And it does take work. Yeah. But do you have anything better to do? Right. So we do it. Well, and guess what? You know, it, nothing. Oh, my goodness. Is, is this difficult? Sure. Um, but you know, it's more difficult living a life of someone else's expectations, living a life that you were never meant to live, being depressed, being unhealthy, being poor, being broke, living a life that is is so much less than you were supposed to be living. Living that's, a life. That's hard. Just living a life of ego. Yeah. It's just swimming in emotions Horrible. all day long and, you know, being so reactive and, and, you know, not being able to control your temper, your emotion. I mean, it's just, that, that is, oh my goodness, Let's just talk about difficult. Jeez. <laughs> so there is a better way. <laughs> There's a there, better way. There is a higher way. <laughs> I am working on my portion of creation yeah. and it's fun because mm. you do see results Yes. when you actually practice this, it's, it's very, very real. You see it start showing up in ways that will blow your mind. Well, and there's that knowing too. You know, you see it showing up and it's, and it's manifesting and, and all along the way, there's something within you. There's that that cosmic substance within you that's go, that's sort of nodding and saying, and your spirit's going, yes, this is right. Yep, mm -hmm. you're on the right path. This is correct information. The way the, these truths that you're starting to live by, yeah, you're you're getting it. You're doing it. You're putting in the time. You're putting in the work. You're working on your portion of creation, mm -hmm. which is to generate velocity, to my belief, which is to stay in the stayed state of mind that I wow. I yeah. see it, I have it, I believe it, I'm grateful for it, and I'm in. in increasing the intensity, the velocity of that. And I do this over and over by bringing the fullest of all of my expectations into the present tense moment of right now for me to assemble my constructive thoughts and all of my decisive actions. You, you can't sit there on the throne of your thoughts for very long before you receive the impulse of, I got to go. I got to do, I, I don't know why I'm supposed to show up over there, but um, give me my hat. The sun's out. I'm going down there. Some <laughs> Something's going to happen yeah. when I get there, even if it's just to have the manifestation wow. of another thought. But chances are somebody's going to show up that mm -hmm. that needed to show up. That's so the, the impulse to do and to go follows the, the meditative time and putting in the work with the, the sense of gratitude. And now all of a sudden... When I act in perfect faith regarding my own perceptions of truth, what do you know? I've got plenty of time. Mm -hmm. I'm not in a hurry anymore. I have the days go on and on and on. And there, there's this, this pattern of, of hurriedness and, and worried. It just dissipates. And peace begins to rise up from within. Mm -hmm. When I no longer manage my life as though I'm preparing to be judged, manage my life because I know I'm going to be condemned by the expectations of other people. I'm not in that management anymore. And so I've been free and unencumbered by all of those expectations. And it's kind of like being able to walk naked through a crowd of people. And you know what? I don't care what they think. <laughs> if you've, you had that, to that you've had that dream too yeah <laughs> and i don't think it i don't think it worked that way i think i was in a bit of a hurry <laughs> right but if you can get to that place you know what somebody thinks of me is none of my business right so i work to impress me mm. and only wow. me yes i dress to impress me i write music and i paint to impress me I meditate on the biggest, the brightest, the great, grandest possibilities for me right now in this moment because I'm doing my life and I'm doing it from my heart and from my heart, my life will flourish. Mm. I'm developing in the attitude of I'm doing me. I'm working in the moment of now to unbecome or to reprogram my expectations and, and to do it for me. Because you know, my life is, it's no longer formed by anybody or anything outside of the intimacy of myself. And it 
And if myself includes the self of a manifested life partner, a lover, then my expectations are our expectations that we've aligned together. In the power of two, I am telling you, the power of two in this universe that are aligned together, they can transform the universe around them with a velocity that is unlike anything other than the speed of light. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm telling you right now, there's nothing more powerful than when there are two or more aligned with their expectations for oh, this wonderful adventure. There is not one of... Uh, of Anybody that's just merely surviving, um, it, it, that, that does not, it's not catapulted into this sphere of excellence when they are combined in their expectations with another. And it's an existence of exploration that's just beyond which either one individual could have ever imagined by themselves before. The power of two is a force that opens endless possibilities more than any one of you could have ever thought of. And that's the magic of even our relationship, Maggie. We just, and we talk about this often, the journey that we're on. I don't, we know that neither one of us would be on this if it were not for the, the power of the two of us. Absolutely. And when there, there are so many reasons for that, when you start to look at it from, you know, when one is up, the other's down and vice versa. And so you, you keep your energy energies and your frequencies high, you know, at all times because you're not on this roller coaster sort of by yourself. And so you have this really beautiful um, accountability with one another. And then I also believe that, like you're saying, that the universe responds at double time. I think the universe responds to the double whammy of belief and faith that are coming from a true partnership. And this is why relationships matter. This is why if you do have toxic relationships, uh, relationships that tend to drain you or make you have negative, uh, harmful or shameful thoughts, that you have to cut those off. You have to get rid of them if you want to grow, succeed, flourish, create your own space and garden in this lifetime because it works both ways. Well, it's like any relationship that you have with someone else, whether you know it or not. It's just like climbing on a tandem bicycle and the person that you've decided that I'm going to be friends with you. Let's say that they're up front and you're in the back. And while you're pedaling as hard as you can, they're just kind of like dragging the brake a little bit. Drag, just put a little drag on that brake. <laughs> Because you're not in agreement. You're not yeah. in alignment. And their emotions become your emotions. And if you are not willing to allow those emotions, negative emotions to become you, there's a drag in your life. Yes. And it's pulling you back. It's pulling you down. And there's not a, uh, an ease of victory because of the, 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 contracting, uh, the contrasting rather uh, mm -hmm. uh, place that each of you are emotionally and the test that each one of you are taking in this life. When I'm so aware of the power of our conversations, you and I purpose to have positive conversations. We have optimistic conversations, conversations about the present moment, the future. You know, the, the power of conversation makes the world go round. I mean, this is what is building out the life. Or down. Or down. This is, this is <laughs> what is building out the life. That, this is the construction zone that you were talking about. Um, and so, again, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful dance of, or it can be a beautiful dance of optimism and growth together and, you know, getting your, uh, and I, I don't love the word, I've never loved the word goals. It's so <laughs> sterile, um, but maybe dreams and visions mm -hmm. and you're getting those aligned together. And as you're aligning them, you have to discuss them to get that mental image solidified in each of your minds. And so you're just, you're just doing so much exponentially. It's not just the power of two, it's the power of two. And then it's, it, it builds on itself again and again and again. And so it's so much more. The power of two imaging that, you know what? Everything in our lives is going right. Yes. And because we don't live by appearance. We live by expectation and the imagination. Everything is going right. Yeah. Because if things appear to be going wrong, if somebody in your life is always telling you there's something wrong, there's something bad. What about oh, this? Did, did what you about hear that? about Tom and how bad things are with him? Did you hear about what happened to me or what's going to happen to you? Or do you remember how bad things... The, yeah. When... If things appear to be going wrong, remember, it's just an illusion because it's just an appearance that things are going wrong. Kinetic believers develop in the attitude that nothing can be wrong in this world but themselves. And the only thing that could be wrong with yourself is your attitude. 
in the present moment. So whenever I find myself becoming worried, for example, I stop and meditate to rise above the noise of fear. Because I understand that, you know what, I'm instantly cut from my connection with the universal substance of things hoped for uh, any time that I begin to hurry or worry or that I think that things are wrong or I allow somebody else to tell me how wrong or bad things are. There is no power or enlightenment. There's no wisdom to be gained until I am relaxed and breathing deeply and fearlessly, and I am calm. Why? Because I'm convinced in my knower that all is well. It has to be. Every human being has a powerful will, and when it's balanced and in harmony with their purpose of being, the inward flow of abundance is uninterrupted. I mean, the world is transforming, and of course there are conditions that you could point to and say, well, that could be better. Or that could be worse. That's judging and that's measurements. And we don't live by measurements and judgments. We live by the expectation of perfected completion where we are all headed. And so, you know, you could think about it this way. Why worry or hurry? The world has advanced just fine before I ever came into it. And it's going to continue to advance just like it's supposed to after I'm long gone. So I'm not going to waste my turn of being here by fearing that uh, what I see is, is incorrect and miss out on experiencing the greater portion of me, the, the one that's prosperous, the one that's healthy and strong and full of joy and peace and happiness while I am here in the land of the living. So I remain calm in my victory, poised in my pursuit and cheerful in my acquisitions and I've got faith in the wisdom of my, my creation, because I was created after all. You know, it's easy to walk around and think, well, look, look at me. Aren't I something? Look, aren't you, how do you like me now? <laughs> aren't I wonderful? And do you like what I've done with me? How do you like my face and the, the face I chose for me? How do you like my height? Didn't I choose a great height for me? And all of those things. You know, I was created this way. And I am wonderfully made. And it was not by you, it was not by me, but I was created in, in the image of the Creator. And all any person ever needs to do is to come into harmony and agreement with their creative purpose for their existence. And then one of the most difficult challenges that I think most people come up against is to overcome the old habitual way of doing things according to the expectations that were placed on them. The way that they used to think about things to overcome that? Are you kidding me? And you, like you were saying, we it's so easy to fall back into, well, let's, let's hash this out again. <laughs> and then to re replace all of those habits of thinking with new thought forms and the physical habits that should follow those new thought forms. All of the natural world, all of the physical world around us, societies and commerce, all of that stuff is ruled by Habits. Habits. Think about it. Uh, kings, plutocrats, tyrants, rulers, masters, all they all keep their power only because the people habitually accept them as powerful. Things are as they are in this world because spiritual beings in the natural state form habits of expecting things the way that they have been, the way that they were raised, the way that they were told they should be. The power kinetic belief is that, you know what, it transforms, Maggie. It, it changes when we change our habitual expectations regarding our lives, regarding our experiences, including the social expectations of those that were around us. When we change our expectations, everything changes. It mm -hmm. has to. It must change. Yes. The way any person habitually thinks rules their lives. I mean, things are as they are only because people form habits of expecting things the way that they are. Mm -hmm. And another challenge to overcome is when I, when I look around to observe the world around me as it appears to be, I'm measuring the average state of the five senses. I'm evaluating things that I can see, touch, smell, and hear, and all of, all of that in the same manner that I've been judged by. Mm -hmm. So the spiritual person while having their natural experience, if they continue in the way of measuring the world around them by the five senses, 
by what they see, feel, feel, and hear, and taste, touch, they too are going to eventually begin thinking of themselves as an average person, one who's just a victim of circumstances. So how do we get out of living this life by the senses? How do we change that? It's We wake up naturally looking around, and we the last thing we do before we go to sleep is we're looking around the, the room we're in. We are immersed in the five senses. So like we say, this takes work yeah. to transcend to that higher perspective where we, our lens for life changes from the practical to the spiritual. You can't be lazy minded and, and do this. You can't just, you know, be a part time kinetic believer and expect any success. If anything, that will just make it quite a bit harder <laughs> because you'll be hyper aware of everything that, that you're supposed to be doing, but nothing seems to work. <laughs> it's like mind yoga, isn't it? You can't be lazy and do yoga, even though you're on a mat. It's very intense. Yes. It, it takes effort. Yeah. And so to avoid the worldly perspective, I've got to do some mind yoga and meditate in the present moment of now to avoid those senses. Mm, yes. And, and many times, um, you know, we talk about different phases of kinetic belief, and there are definitely going to be very different experiences within different phases, and that's to be expected at the very beginning, for example. Um, for, there's a lot of, I, if, if it feels very isolating at the beginning because you haven't met, you haven't attracted any kinetic believers into your life, and you just have all the old, the old guard walking around being toxic and negative. Um, so it can be very lonely feeling in the, at the beginning, but all of these things, it's important to tell yourself and remember and stir it up as you go that it's worth it. Mm. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. The life, the person that I know that I can be and that I am, that I was created to be, the world needs that person. I need that person. I need this life. I was meant, I mean, the ripple effect is untold. We, we can't even fathom the ripple effect on the, on the world and the universe of living the life we were meant to live. Um, so again, just all of this is, it is worth it. And it's important to be so mindful of that as we go through every season. There's few things that uh, are greater than attracting another KB into your life. And I remember all, out of all the con concerts we've done, we had, there was one down in St. Pete Beach, Florida, where after the concert, we had a couple of KBs come up and yeah. introduce themselves and totally unexpected. But then it, when it occasionally happens, though, and someone finds us or yeah. uh, recognizes us and they come up and speak, they're, the edification, the celebration and championing the of connection. The, the, the human spirit in another individual. Yeah. And you see them not for how they look, but for who they are. Mm -hmm. There's this transcendent elevation of, of collective spirituality between the two of us. And it, it, the, the feeling is so euphoric. Mm -hmm. And there's such a celebration of life, of eternal life, the substance of life in that moment. And it's, it's more than a flicker. It's a flame. And there's a connection that's made that is eternal. And like you said, it's possible to attract that in your life with yes. the expectation through gratitude. Well, and what's so beautiful about attracting in and, and meeting other kinetic believers is it's not about what season each of you are in or what level you may be at. It's that you have a common goal. You have a common understanding of how the universe works, what your goal, you know, what you want to achieve, the things that you're working toward in life. So even if you're at different levels, it's the overarching theme of positivity mm -hmm. and connection and, and belief and know and a knowing that uh, of your own personal power that connects you and binds you regardless of the level yeah regardless we all we retreat into our journals for creating our highest viewpoints for thought forms and images as we imagine ourselves as we desire to be and the greater mantras will become habitual in our lives and then those Habitual expectations begin to become us, and they replace all of the old habits, and then we, the world around us begins to form an alignment with those higher mantras. Well, and, and something that so I find to be really beautiful about kinetic believers is that they're all self-generating. So they're all working on this journey and doing all this from within. So they're not walking around, you know, trying to drain another kinetic believer of their virtue so that they mm -hmm. can feel better. Mm -hmm. We're all coming together in the power of individuality, the power of a common pursuit. And then we feed off of each other in a way that doesn't drain one another. You're by just feeding each other by feeding each other. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so it's that power of, 
of, of an individual pursuit and even awareness of individual responsibility in this universe that when you come together, um, it, 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 the energy becomes exponential. There's more than enough to go around and everyone, everyone leaves feeling. So, you know, that's the reason for the euphoric feeling when you leave and why you just want to get back to it. Because we're all walking around on the wild side. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. And there that, you go. And, and that wild side requires a disciplined approach to operating continuously through spiritual eyes and with a spiritual perspective. One that is constructed from looking within to then look outward through our articles of faith and our blueprint for our lives. And it's a perspective for living that's constructed from the blueprint for our lives that's going to provide the inspiration that, for inscribing into our manifesting journals the way that we do. Because it's amazing. If you're just starting out on your manifesting journal, your day one is going to be totally different than day 40, totally different than day 50. <laughs> and, and you'll go back and start rewriting day one when you circle <laughs> back around in the third four, and fourth and fifth time. And it's amazing yeah. how the, the, the inscribing that you do the, become, becomes lifted and lifted and lifted and higher and higher. And you're like, well, wait a minute. Uh, that's a fault there. I'm not going to stumble on that, that thing that I wrote about last month again. And, and it just begins yeah. to take on this new life yeah. as you go through the process. And that's why it's so important to not fall into the trap that so many people in the world try to tra entrap you with the concept of, uh, I want to be someone I used to be. Um, oh, those were the good old days. Look at how I looked or look at how I felt then. Um, that is such a, a terrible, terrible trap in life as if you're supposed to return to someone you used to be. The person that you're supposed to be, you've never met. You, mm -hmm. That's in the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were evolving. We're evolving and it's okay to evolve. You're supposed to grow. You're supposed to change. We're supposed to you know, become bigger, better, stronger, faster um, and not be looking back to what you think. Because guess what? You're misremembering it. It mm -hmm. wasn't that great. <laughs> Okay. I mean, maybe you look, maybe, you know, your butt looks better in those pictures, but who cares? That is not how it actually was. You want to become the higher, better, uh, you know, more centered, more seasoned version of yourself. That's another reason why it's exciting to grow older as a kinetic believer. It's exciting to get more and more years under your belt because it, the future, the tomorrow will always be better. That present moment that you carry into tomorrow, it's always going to be better mm -hmm. than today because you're growing into it. You're growing into it. And that's okay. You know, you and I have talked about how, you know, we love who we, who we knew each other as when we first met and who we are today and who we have yet to become. And that is such a powerful way to approach relationship with self and, and relationship with each other. Well, it's always been the habitual collective thought that forms either prosperity or that destroys societies. And the habitual thought that determines an individual's destiny, like you're talking about. The destiny of more, the destiny of the adventure. The destiny is not a destination, but it's becoming more and growing and developing to become more. <laughs> I'm laughing because of, you know, we really have quite the balance on this podcast. I talk about, you know, what your butt looked like in pictures and you talk about the, the, you know, what unhinged a society historically. Well, we, we, we have to keep moving Jeez. forward. I don't know how else to do it. I, you know, we banter is just that, right? Oh, man. Banter is banter. But, but it's the destiny of, of the butt, the destiny of the journey. Yes. The destiny Thank is you. in the journey or Thank the evolution, you. and yes. it's not in the physical. Yeah. All that we can be entertained by the physical, just like the spiritual, the purpose of all of our lives yeah. is to find entertainment in the process, yeah. entertainment in the journey. William Shakespeare said, it's not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves, mm. yes. the individual, in ourselves. One of the greatest gifts a person can ever give to themselves is to stop caring about what other people think because that is the worst habit. And that's why I keep saying it over and over. The cause of most failure, listen, it's the biggest hindrance to personal growth. It's the largest influencer of sickness and disease and distress, depression, drug addictions, crimes against humanity, strife, bigotry, hatred, wars, all that stuff. Caring about what, what 
other people think is the worst habit that has ever formed yes. within human beings. It is the basis of all jealousy, the basis of all fear. No person was ever supposed to lord over another. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, most people that have been elevated to that of lordship, they don't even know it because people choose whom they want to please. Mm. Wow. And the human being's desire to be approved of is the single most powerful thing that will prevent most people from being able to change enough, to think differently enough, to believe in the miracle enough, to manifest anything different in their lives. And it's not going to be until I fall in love with who I am that I'll come out from under the life-destructive influences of all of the negative opinions of other people. All of us were beautifully made, and there's no such thing as a spiritual birth defect. Go back, go back to your original aspirations and dare to begin dreaming again. Not just wishful thinking, but imagining to form desires. Begin again right now to receive the new birth of you by unbecoming every negative influence that has ever had a part in leading you away from your, your purpose to flourish in the original destiny of you. Listen, it's never too late. I mean, you're never too old or young to begin reestablishing your identity. Give yourself permission to become an empowered human being and start manifesting whatever it is that you can think of or imagine on purpose and do it right now. The person you become when you get older is going to thank you for it. Just let's work on some highest viewpoints. Just yes. say this out loud. Say it. Say all experiences. All experiences are guideposts. Are guideposts for my best life. For my best life. I cast down fears. I cast down fears. And as I do. And as I do. I'm strengthened and I'm empowered. I'm strengthened and I'm empowered. I don't dwell on what I used to fear. I don't dwell on what I used to fear. And I don't hurry or worry. I don't hurry or worry. I practice the feeling of being fearless. I practice the feeling of being fearless. And I'm doing it every day. And I'm doing it every day. My comfort zone. My comfort zone. Is my boldness. Is my boldness. To be brave. To be brave. And to be me. And to be me. All of my habits. All of my habits. Are chosen by me. Are chosen by me. And they are fearless. And they're fearless. And they are centered. They are centered. Within my purpose of genius. Within my purpose of genius. So I accept. So I accept. And I love myself. <laughs> and I love myself. And I love my creator. And I love my creator. And I love creation. And I love creation. And all others as they are. And all others as they are. And it's wonderfully delicious. It's wonderfully delicious. <laughs> to be alive. To be alive. What is truth? <laughs> What is what In is closing. truth? Because you know the, the truth of a matter it can't be determined by what a person believes about mm. something to be true. Mm. I mean, what we call truth, those are just opinions, right? Yes. And if you get enough people to be in agreement about an opinion, it becomes a subjective reality. But just because it's a subjective reality doesn't make it true. Now I can have a lot of different beliefs that are true to me. But my truth isn't necessarily the, the, the truth of, well, it's just not necessarily the truth. So what is the truth? Truth can be found in, I don't know. Hmm. Because I don't know. That's the foundation to every belief. It's the condition that exists in the moment before I decide <laughs> on a belief. And wow. it's the same moment that I must revisit to unbecome a some force fed belief. And I'm, I'm just, this, this is so vital. And I, I don't know how else to say this, but the, the three words, I don't know, that's what clears a space in my personal reality for me to begin to create the life that Maggie, you and I are talking about, because it's just an opportunity to explore th these new beliefs. I don't know motivates new adventures in my life. What would it be like to live in an, an awakened society? I mean, truly mm. awakened. Could it be as simple as recognizing that all of our beliefs, all of our ideas are nothing to argue about? Whatever somebody else says they believe to be true does not provoke an argument. Mm. 
Because believing in something doesn't make it true for everyone. Allowing people to have their truths without me challenging them sets me free to experience what I believe. Yes. Now, someone else might believe in something totally different than I do. But getting into an argument over our beliefs means that we're both being dishonest. Because if we were honest, we would both agree that we adopted our beliefs as a solution to, I don't know. Right. And it's the I don't know that produces the childlike faith that's going to position me to receive infinite wisdom regarding who I am and why I'm here and, and where we should go next or should I go anywhere or what should I do next? How do I change things from the way they appear to be to the way that you know I imagine them to be? All of life's questions are answered to those who begin by saying, I don't know, but I'm listening and I'm willing and I'm ready. So let's just do it. Wow. Mm. If you do want to check out the journal that we talked about quite a bit today, you can do that at stephenkinney.com and make sure you sign up for the email list while you're there to make sure you're notified when we do show up in Dallas <laughs> or the next stop. And this was a powerful podcast, Steve. Thank you so much for, um, you know, we, we, we always say thank you for all the wisdom. And, and I think it's also important to acknowledge that it's not just thank you for the wisdom, but thank you for showing us how to use it and what the heck we should even do with it and, and how to, um, you know, synthesize it in a way that we can actually take it with us, put it in our pocket and carry us, carry it with us throughout the day so that it actually changes our life. And it's not just sitting there in our minds, um, but it's producing fruit. And, and I have to say thank you for that from me and I'm sure all the other KBs out there. And when I say sending out much love and light to all the KB creatives all around the world, there's a, the practical sense of that. It's very real. It is very true because mm -hmm. we are connected. There is a one love. Yeah. And so we're there with you. And that's what we're sending to you right yeah. now. Thanks as usual, Steve, for all the wisdom. Bye.